So today I will be covering various materials from the course about which students came and asked questions. Okay, as well as hopefully we will proceed a bit. So do we see already? Yes. So first of all about Maple. Okay, I would like you to uh, get to Google. There you print, uh, uh, type there, getting started with Maple. Getting started with Maple. And that is about 10 pages. You can transport this material to your email account. And it, it contains quite an information about Maple. Now, I was asked about one topic especially. Yeah, by the way, this also, there is also a book with the same title. And this is an extract from the, from the book. And I was asked uh, the following things. Okay. First of all, as I told you, this semicolon and equal sign is an assignment symbol. Okay, A and then assignment symbol equals three. Okay, so this is addition, subtraction. This is a multiplication, that is a star, and division, that is a slash. So one can write down 1,236 divided by three. The result will be sample output will be 412. Seven thirds output will be seven thirds also, because it leaves ratios as as is. Unless you will ask to evaluate. Okay. Now, if you write a uh, yes, so there is this sign of square root. Okay. Mm, um, so that is uh, this is power and that is square root. Now one can also say evalu eval f. Please write it down if you want, or you will get this. That is, a, it gives floating point decimal evaluation of the function. Eval. So you write, for example, eval, or evaluate f, eval seven thirds. So you will get only then two point three three three, etc. Okay. <coughs> Now, i and pi are imaginary number, and pi are the numbers that are existent there. So, for example, if you write 2i squared, then i squared is minus 1. 2 squared is 4. You will get minus 4. Evaluate, evolve pi. You will get 3, 14, 15, 92, 6, 5, 4. OK? Now, Opposite to what I mentioned about mathematica and other things, maple is case sensitive. That means F O O written with lowercase, or a capital F, but then O O lowercase, or F O O O capital are three different things. Okay. Opposite to what I described before. Now, if Maple does not recognize something, it will assume it is a variable. For example, if you type i squared, it will give you i squared, while you may have wanted minus 1. OK, so if you remember, i, I where is this? Yeah. A capital I is, is minus square root of minus 1, not, not otherwise. OK. Now, if you write square root of 2, 2.0, it will give you 1, 41, 42, etc. But if you want number of digits, so if you want to specify the, the <coughs> precision, then you will write square root of 2. So digits equal 20. Okay? Then semicolon. Square root of 2, you will get 20 digits. Otherwise, it gives 10 digits by default. So if you don't specify, then it gives 10 digits, including, including the first one. OK? 
lines there is uh, something well, for example if you write evaluate evolve evaluate square root of 2 15 digits so you will get this okay so if you write x plus y squared is written like this the output will be this uh, x star y plus y this hat upper hat 2 means xy plus y squared okay now there is expression simplify p simplify p that the simplify command does algebraic simplification otherwise you have long expressions and maybe you have many like terms especially when we use galerkin method there could be many terms like each other <laughs> like themselves then uh, there is this uh, imagine p equals we wrote p equals x square minus 8x plus 15. okay then you write solve p equals 3 with respect to x so that means that is this expression equals 3 is a quadratic equation you write solve okay use the solve command to solve equations pay attention that use the equality sign equals 3 or equals 0 if this equals 0 then you would write p equals 0 with respect to x now differentiation does not come as i said before dif but comes diff so differentiate p with respect to x okay so if this expression is being differentiated x squared minus 8x plus 15 we get 2x minus 8 int integrate p with respect to x gives us this it's x squared we get x cubed over 3 etc no constant of integration okay one more thing is very important for us for galerkin method and that is substitution command s u b s substitute or I have a polynomial expression and I would like to satisfy boundary conditions. I have to satisfy boundary <laughs> conditions at x equals 0. <coughs> so I substitute x equals 4 in this case, but x equals 0 in p. Okay? So if when you substitute in that expression, you get minus 1. Or substitute t square in p, you will get this expression. So that is very, very important. Okay? Uh, that is it and it has of course uh, maple can produce graphs very easily okay so that was a comment about uh, maple that was today one student came and said he did not know how to substitute how to satisfy boundary conditions by maple second is exam I was asked to solve the exam in the class okay an exam or one problem of exam I mean it's the other problem was very simple I think so that was a beam that was connected here I think to um, a rotational spring with some coefficient k and th this was simply support and I wrote here boundary conditions. So here W equals 0. So it is supported from the point of view of W. But then bending moment, the expression is bending moment, um, D2W, DX square, um, equals K times DW DX. Which means bend, this is bending moment. Now this is a slope. There is a connection between them. So that is rotational spring. And I wrote these boundary conditions. Naturally, I wrote these are boundary conditions. Okay. So governing differential equation naturally is EI. Uh, d for w dx in fourth power minus rho a omega squared w equals zero. Now uh, some people did as follows. Okay, mistake. Let me write down mistake. Mistake number one. 
So some people said we have, oh, actually one, one student said, we have EI D2W DX squared equals K DW DX. Let us differentiate. these two times. Then we get EI fourth derivative of W with respect to X4 equals K D3W DX cube, etc. This is forbidden, not allowed. Why this action is not allowed? Because this condition is only at one point. <coughs> <coughs> this is a boundary condition. Valid only in this point. <laughs> indeed, indeed, Spring is spring is attached only at the end. We don't have springs everywhere like such springs. There's no possibility to do su such a <laughs> thing. So that is forbidden. It's a forbidden operation <coughs> <coughs> because this is correct only for x equals zero, not for anywhere else. But it's okay. It is okay to make mistakes. Like we say, to err is human. To forgive must also be human. Okay? in contrast to a proverb which says something else. Okay. And now I will deal with the problem at hand. Do we, do we need some time to write down this? No. Okay. So, two. Then we have this uh, governing uh, solution, W of X equals a1 k1 alpha x plus a2 k2 alpha x plus a3 k3 alpha x plus a4 k4 alpha x. Now to satisfy this boundary condition, so now I have to satisfy the boundary conditions. First of all, at x equals 0, w equals 0. So k2, k3, and k4 are all, all 0 at 0. So k1 at 0 equals 1. <laughs> so therefore, I get a1 times 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 equals 0. So a1 naturally equals 0. Otherwise, this cannot hold. So this guy equals 0. So now we have left the other thing. So we, we want second derivative to calculate. So we just write second derivative. So second derivative will be alpha times a2 k1 alpha x plus a3 k2 alpha x plus a4 k3 alpha x. Say it again. Oh, second. Oh, sorry, sorry. I calculate first derivative. Excuse me. Excuse me. Now, second derivative equals. So, because I need first derivative also. So it will be alpha squared, a2 k4 alpha x plus a3 k1 alpha x plus a4 k2 alpha x. So ei w second derivative at 0 equals alpha squared. Now this guy is 0. This guy is 1, so a3. And this guy is 0 also. Now, first derivative at 0, that equals k times, so k. 
first derivative. So this is so k alpha, and that is a2. So the, the rest are 0. So from here, I'm getting that ei, excuse me, um, so here is ei. I forgot this ei. Please add. So I'm getting ei alpha square a3 equals k alpha a2. So that is a connection. So we can write down that a3 equals, or maybe a2 equals uh, ei alpha divided by k a3. Etc. So we then, so we have a connection. So therefore, instead of a3, I would write this a2 equals. So instead of a2, we will have w of x equals a2. And instead of a2, we will write this ei alpha over k a3 k2 alpha x plus a3 k3 alpha x plus a4 k4 alpha x. Or we can take out this a3, it will be w of x equals a3 k3 alpha x plus ei alpha over k, k2 alpha x plus a4 k4 alpha x, etc. Then we satisfy conditions at the other end. W at L equals zero, so then we get A3, K3 alpha L plus EI alpha over K, K2 alpha L plus A4, K4 alpha L equals zero. And then we have, of course, second derivative equals 0 there. And so, oh, sorry. Yeah, that's fine, that's correct. Now, second derivative will be, look, a3 from here. So we will have, first of all, uh, alpha squared. And then we will have k2, k1 k1 alpha L, then plus EI alpha over K, will be K1, K4 here, alpha L, plus A4, <coughs> excuse me, alpha squared, K2 alpha L. Okay? Then I have a determinant, naturally. K3, so in front of A3 and A4. So that will be K3 alpha L plus EI alpha over K, K2 alpha L, then alpha squared K1 alpha L plus EI alpha over K, K4 alpha L. And here we have K4 alpha L here is alpha squared k2 alpha l is equal to zero. <coughs> so we have to open the parentheses, etc. Now there was a question there for what happens. when k goes to 0. Okay, so it's very easy. Boundary condition becomes <coughs> ei, <coughs> excuse me, w second derivative equals k w first derivative, yes? So when k goes to 0, this becomes ei w second derivative equals 0. So that means that this end already has w equals 0, 
and then w second derivative equals zero. This end becomes simply supported. Okay. Now another question I asked. Question one and question two. What happens when k goes to infinity? Also easy to answer. Look please. E i w second derivative equals k w prime at x equals 0. So let us divide by k both sides. We will get e i w second derivative k equals w prime. So when k goes to 0, left hand side goes to 0. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah, I said when, when k goes to infinity, k equals 0 with delta. When k goes to infinity, this guy goes to 0. So boundary condition goes to w prime equals 0. So therefore, here on the left-hand side, we have w equals 0 was there, and w prime is 0. So that is a clamped end. So then what happens here is as follows. When k equals 0, we have omega square equals pi in fourth power, and then rho a over ei, and that is l in fourth power. When k goes to infinity, omega square goes to 4, 7, that's first frequency. 473 in fourth power divided by L in fourth power rho A over EI. So let us say uh, K. Let us say okay. K is 0 and K goes to infinity. Okay, so that is K. When it is 0, then frequencies are, okay, so that is pi in fourth power. Okay, that is a starting point in k equals 0. k cannot be, uh, cannot be negative naturally. So here it is 473 in fourth power. So this is an asymptote. It cannot go beyond. So that natural frequency behaves like this. Okay, so that is an asymptote. And these roots are obtained from the equations that I wrote. Okay. It is this determinantal equation. But at least that is a qualitative behavior of the roots. That is how they will behave. Okay, naturally this 473 is approximately 1 plus 1 half. Pi. Okay, so it goes from pi in fourth power to pi times one and half in fourth power. That is the behavior of the frequency. Any questions here? That was a test, test problem. Now, additional question that was raised today is homework number 10. <coughs> and homework number 10 
dealt with clamped, clamped beams buckling or columns buckling. <coughs> so here, W equals zero, DW, DX equals zero. Here the same, W equals zero, <coughs> DW, DX equals zero. Now, some students got by oversight, I don't like the word mistake, so when I'm talking about others, I say oversight. When I talk about myself, I say, I say mistake. So if you become a boss or leader somewhere, please use this terminology, oversight or something like that. Some students got P critical equals pi square EI over L square. So this is not correct. Okay, indeed. <coughs> okay, if I have a simply supported beam, P critical. Then for simply supported beam, we have pi square EI over L square. And at, it is attributed to Euler, 1744. By the way, clamped clamped beam was dealt, was solved by Lagrange, Jean Joseph Lagrange. I think 1780 or something like that, 1777. I, I don't have a good memory because it was a long time ago. So we will solve this problem at the request of students. Um, so we have this EI W force derivative uh, plus P critical W second derivative equals zero. So we wrote, I think, W force derivative plus P critical over EI W second derivative equals zero. And how did we denote this quantity? I don't remember. Alpha squared or K squared or how was it? Beta, okay. So W force derivative plus beta squared W second derivative equals zero. And then we have, therefore, W equals um, in A times in power Rx. I substitute there, I get A times R in force power plus beta squared. Did I write beta squared or beta in force power? No, beta squared, yes. Beta squared R squared. Yeah, beta squared. So, don't like so I get R A, of course, is not zero. So therefore, I get R squared, R squared plus beta squared equals zero. So that gives us this R squared equals zero gives me R, um, uh, gives me roots zero and zero. R square equals beta square gives me R equals plus minus I beta, where I equals square root of minus one. So therefore solution can be written like this. W of X equals A one sine beta X plus A2 cosine beta x plus A3x plus A4. That is because of zero. Because of zero I have constant and constant I am x. And these guys gives me sine and cosine. A 
Any questions until now? No. Um, okay, we are positively lazy. Hence, I will use some convenient coordinate system. When I say pos lazy means I don't want to spend much time. Therefore, I would like, if, if, I, if there is something comfortable, I should not refuse myself if I can afford. And being lazy is actually a very positive thing because uh, otherwise I will spend much time, I could have used on something else. So, because we were positively lazy, actually whole science developed because uh, otherwise, say Babylonians knew how to solve quadratic equations about 3,500 years ago, but they knew how to solve a specific equation, this equation. And they knew how to solve another specific equation with other numbers. Etc. So if there was no general formula, we will have to remember or we should have a big handbook of all quadratic equations that are known in the literature. Then you are searching which one fits you. Because we are lazy with, when I say we, I don't mean myself, quadratic equations, but we as humans together develop this general formula. Okay? So therefore, I will use a convenient coordinate system. So that is why. So I naturally, to use because there is a symmetry, there is symmetry in boundary conditions. So it's really asking itself to put coordinate system in the middle. <coughs> so that is L over two, L over two. So then boundary conditions are W at minus L over 2, E L equals 0, and W prime at minus L over 2 equals 0. W at L over 2 equals 0, W prime at L over 2 equals 0. Maybe indeed for clamped, clamped things, it makes sense to put coordinate system in the middle. Because some things, so what are the conditions then? Okay, let me put this in front of me. Okay. Uh, okay, so that will be A1. Now s I put minus L over 2, but sine is a, uh, odd, n odd function, so I will get minus sine of beta over 2L. Okay, beta L over 2. Okay. Then plus A2 cosine beta L over 2. Then this guy minus A3L over 2 plus A4 equals 0. This gives me an idea, indeed, that I did not think before for Mr. Duja, that for clamped, clamped nanotube, maybe it makes sense to put coordinate system in the middle and some coefficients will be canceled, as we will see here. I did not think that before. Okay, and then we will have, okay, W, I will use now this. That is first condition. Now that is the second condition. Um, A1 sine beta L over 2, I just substitute this one, bit plus A2 cosine beta L over 2, plus A3 L over 2, plus A4 equals 0. We will see how it will be helpful. Pay attention. You see that here I have minus and here minus. I can add these two equations and these things will disappear. So something that we will get will be easier. Instead of four terms, I have only two terms. So less terms, first of all, less terms are better than more terms. That is understandable. But there is another one. Someone could say, come on, I'm working in this job. I'm paid from nine to five. 
So I'm not in a hurry. I don't need to simplify because I must occupy myself, so to say. I will not do this. I will not introduce coordinate system in the middle. Okay? Yes, he is allowed naturally not to introduce coordinate system in the middle, but because his calculations will be lengthier, he has a more possibility to be human and make an error. Okay, so we better eliminate this if, if we can. And now, second, <coughs> now we differentiate this guy, okay? Now we want to put these things. So when I differentiate, I get beta, first of all. A, one, beta, and then we have cosine beta L over two. And from here, when I differentiate, it will be minus A two beta sine beta L over two, because now I got sine and when I put minus beta L over two, I get minus. Then will be uh, differential A three, this equals zero. Now I put <coughs> um, L over two, will be A one, when I differentiate beta, cosine beta L over two, then when I differentiate this, it will be minus A, sorry, here I made a mistake. When I differentiated, I got minus sine. But then when I substituted minus L over two, so I should get plus, okay? Now when I differentiate, I get minus beta, A two beta, and then will be sine beta L over two plus A3 equals zero. I got four conditions. Now I will start to manipulate with these guys. <coughs> okay, we sum first two equations. And then I get these, and these are canceling each other. So when I sum, there will be two, but then I'm, can uh, I'm, I'm canceling by two. So it will be A2 cosine beta L over two. These and things together plus A4 equals zero. Okay? Now I can also calculate, we calculate difference of first two equations. Okay, so that will be look please. This minus this, so will be minus two times, so I, I cancel by two, will be minus A1 sine beta L over two. This minus this cancel each other. S here will be minus A3 L over two. It will be two times, but, and these guys are gone. See, it comes neater because suddenly I have only two. In each of them, I have two instead of these two. Now we sum up, sum up uh, third and fourth equations. So I get this. This plus this will be this are gone. A one beta cosine beta L over two uh, plus A three equals zero. A difference. Difference will be this minus this is zero. So this minus this is zero. This minus this will be two times, but I, so I will be having just A two beta sine KL over two equals zero. Okay, so these are the four equations that I get. So let us call it one, two, three, and four. Um, I am reading actually from notebooks of my forthcoming book that I'm writing for many years on stability, but I just 
touch it only once in a few years, and therefore it is not finished yet. Okay. Say it again. Yes, beta. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so what we got, look please. Here we have A2, and here A2, and A4. Then in these two we have A1 and A3. So what we got actually, instead of, of four, okay, connect coupled equations, we got a pair of un okay pair of coupled two equations okay pair means this is one pair and that is a second pair they are coupled in between them but they are uncoupled with the rest okay because in here we have A1 and A3, here I have A2 and A4, okay? So we have two sets of equations. Okay, so let me write down this, 50. So let me write down first, uh, no, second and third equations. Okay, so that will be minus A1 sine beta L over 2 minus A3 L over 2 equals 0. Oh, that, is just, that means that is plus. And here A1 beta cosine beta L over 2 plus A3 equals 0. Okay, so here we get as follows. Here, determinant I have to write. So instead of, instead of, instead of four by four determinant, we get two determinants, two by two. Voila, that is just great. I think it's nicer to deal with two by two determinant rather than, than four by four determinant. So we have sine beta L over two, L over two, beta cosine beta L over two, one equals this. So I will get then sine beta L over two minus beta L over 2 cosine beta L over 2 equals 0. Or if I divide by cosine beta L over 2, I get sine beta L over 2 divided by cosine beta L over 2 equals beta L over 2. Or tangens beta L over 2 equals beta L over 2. That is one equation. Look, it comes so nicely. <coughs> and now this was done with A1 and A3. Now we are left with A2 and A4. It's five, this is six. A2 and A4, I will rewrite them. <coughs> A2 cosine beta L over 2 plus A4 equals 0. A2 beta sine beta L over 2 equals 0. So determinant here is like cosine beta L over 2, 1. Beta sine beta L over 2, 0. This equals 0 because there is no A4 here. A4 is multiplied by 0. So this guy times this minus, so we get beta 
sine beta L over 2 equals 0. <coughs> OK, now some summary. We, we are not done yet. So we have to solve the following equations. Beta sine beta L over 2 equals 0. And tangens beta L over 2 equals beta L over 2. So these are the equations that we have to deal with. By the way, had, had you gone with 4 by 4 determinant, it would be the same results you, you would obtain. I mean, if in, if in homework you would have done direct way, it's also the same result. 7. Now let us solve these guys. So beta sine beta L over 2 equals 0. So beta could be 0, but that is not possible. Because otherwise beta square equals P critical divided by EI. So this would mean P critical equals 0, which is not possible. We did say that we have no we, we start with p critical p equals zero, then we perturb, then we increase this load, then we again perturb, etc. So it did not lose stability in the beginning. That means that it should lose stability at somewhere else. At p is not zero. Only for free free column. Of course, p equals 0 is enough to lose stability. I can just transfer this free free from here to here. So it lost stability. It never came back to the original position. So p equals 0 is a buckling load. Because I moved from here to here. It, it was free. Okay. <laughs> so what should be 0 is sine beta L over 2 equals 0. Sine beta L over 0 means beta L over 2 is pi. Or beta L equals 2 pi. Or beta equals what? Uh, 